Aloha. Aloha. Um, my talk uh, presentation today is about MOOCs. If you haven't heard the term, MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Course. Massive Open Online Course. Um, when you think of a marathon, when you think of climbing uh, Mount Everest, uh, one thing I learned about uh, creating a MOOC is that uh, it's more fun to talk about than it is to do. <laughs> um, the basic process I went through to create my MOOC is I uh, determined the overall objective. Uh, basically, the idea was to create a totally free uh, online introductory accounting course uh, for the world. That really, anybody in the world, as long as they have internet access, they could access the course and they can learn basic fundamental uh, financial accounting primarily. Not so much managerial accounting, but uh, financial accounting. So I had to specify my learning objectives. Luckily there was a team of uh, two professors, uh, Dan Danes and uh, Joe Bittner, who actually created uh, a learning outcomes listing <coughs> that they're hoping to use to create an advanced placement course in accounting for high school. So it's a pilot right now. It's not yet approved by the advanced placement group. Um, but anyway, so I, it was a, a great blessing that I could just pull up their content specifications and say, yep, I'm going to try to do a lot of that stuff and see how it goes. Uh, the basic process I went through once I was, uh, we, we moved our family to St. George, Utah for the year um, uh, to do this. So I just set up a little home office in, my, in our home over there. And uh, the basic process of start to finish for a given topic of that content specification was this. I wrote the transcript in uh, Microsoft Word. I then planned and created the visuals, though some were PowerPoint. Other times I would actually draw things out on a Wacom or a Wacom a tablet, those drawing tablets. Um, I would use Screencast-O-Matic or some other screen capture software to capture uh, the video, the PowerPoint, or my, my writing and my audio. So I'd create a little uh, video file of that screen capture. So there's different software, the Screencast-O-Matic gene. Uh, you, might, you want to make sure you have a good microphone. I'm kind of disappointed in the, on the first few videos of my course where the audio is not as good as I learned how to create later on. So make sure you get that stuff nailed down at the beginning. Uh, then I spent a fair amount of time editing. Uh, I, I bought a MacBook Pro, not with university funds, but my own personal funds. Uh, and I learned how to use iMovie, learned how to use a MacBook because I'm a PC guy and that took a bit of work to figure that out. Um, different software was the iMovie software. Audacity is an audio editing software. And then also YouTube. There's a lot of functions in YouTube that I wasn't aware of that I had to learn. Um, then I uploaded. So I uploaded um, the edited videos. I uploaded an audio MP3 file so someone could just download it to their um, i-whatevers to listen to it. Um, PowerPoint slides, I created PDFs because not everybody's going to have Excel, I mean uh, the Microsoft Office suite, so I created those in PDF files so they could, uh, it, they could uh, read those. Um, then I created the assessments, so quizzes and stuff like that. A lot of the quizzes I created, the, the variables in the mathematical problems change with every single student. So it's, it's, it's an algorithmic type of question, so every student pulls up their question, their numbers are all different from the next person. <coughs> So even if they retake the quiz over and over again, they always see new numbers, which hopefully cause them to think a little bit more. And I did it over again. So that was just for one topic. In general, a given topic was about 10 minutes of video. Some are shorter, some are a little bit longer. Nothing I don't think more than 12 minutes long. Um, I also would take that video and I'd chop it up into very small segments. And I would create the transcript right below it. And you'll see that in my um, in, in the actual course in a minute. Um, so a student could kind of skim down and see the transcripts. Oh, I don't really understand that. They could click on that video that just relates to that little piece of the transcript. Uh, that took a lot of time. Anyway, so I did that, and I did that uh, 65 times. So there's effectively 65 topics. In general, a topic would take me about a week. So for 10 minutes of video, and do all the editing and all the stuff I did, and creating the assessments and all that stuff, and embedding it all on Canvas and doing all this stuff, it would take me about a week to do 10 minutes of stuff, including the assessments. So then after you, you did all that, you created it all, I, I published it, and then you hang on. Because then it's out to the world, you got people all over the world who are now taking the course, and my course started January 13th. It's been going for, uh, since then. It's a, kind of an open pace type of schedule. 
that uh, as long as they're done by May 31st, they'll be able to get through the course. If not by then, then sorry, they didn't get it done. Um, so I had, uh, well, I'll tell you how it looks, what the course looks like, and then I'll talk about some of the statistics about the actual course. So what does it actually look like? Um, I'm going to go ahead and click onto the site. Uh, that's the, that would be the introductory screen that a student would see. And let's uh, get into it. So if, if a student were to get into it, they'd kind of see it like this. And I tried to have a, they encouraged me from the Canvas network to kind of have a visual interface at the very beginning that tells them exactly what to do. So you have this big box that says start here. This gives introductory information about Canvas and about the course. Uh, these two here. And then it says, okay, let's get going. And we get into the modules. So uh, <coughs> the approach I took is I'd have five modules. Each module would have three to seven topics with quizzes and cumulative quizzes. And then we'd have an exam. And then there'd be five more. And then there'd be an exam. And then there'd be five more. Well, actually six more. And then the final one. And that's how it worked. Um, if you were to click on, a on the modules view, and this is what I recommend my students to do, is click on the modules view. And a lot of you use Canvas here on campus. Um, so you're used to that, um, that interface where you kind of organize things into little blocks. So this is the module view. There's my start here. Here's my orientation. And I always try to give them an, an estimate of how much time it would take to complete that. So in each of these, I'd say, well, this takes about an hour. It's about an hour. And so each module usually would take about an hour. So if you look at this very first module, it's key players in the world of finance and business. I give an overview. This is what the module's about. Then I have a study, and this study would be a given topic. So this one is what are equity investors and what information do they use to make investment decisions. <coughs> if a student were to click on that, then, um, and you know, I'm an accountant, so some of the creativity may be lacking, but this is kind of how I organize it. Uh, you have step one where you watch this video, it's seven minutes long, and then I have all the ancillary, not ancillary, but the, the same information but in different formats. So they can download the MP3, they can download the Word transcript of the whole thing in PDF and, and doc, also the PowerPoint slides. So if they get through that seven minutes, then they go ahead and take this, it's a quiz, it's a five question quiz. Uh, I pull that from a question bank pool that I created. Uh, I usually have 15 to 25 questions per uh, topic. And they can take it as many times as they like until they score at least 80%, at which point they get a check mark in the module saying, hey, you achieved that, good job, and then you can keep going on. Um, then here below is where I take all that, that seven minutes of video and I chop it up into very small segments. So these are all individual videos, and I tell them how long that particular video is. This is 12 seconds, and I just say welcome, blah, blah, blah. So underneath each of these little links is the um, transcript for that video. Okay, and it goes all the way down through the whole video. So a student, after they watch the first time, they can skim down and say, hey, I just need to watch this one piece because I really didn't get it. And they can watch just that piece. It makes it a little more easily accessible. Um, if they were to take a quiz, well, down at the very bottom, you probably know this in Canvas, you just choose next, and the, and the quiz would come up. And it says, OK, you ready to take the quiz? Go ahead and resume the quiz. And I just show one, qu one question at a time, they hit next, and, and then they'll get a score. And if they get more than four out of five, then the check mark appears. You're doing great. Keep moving on. If not, then they can keep taking it again and again. And then it just keeps going. So the whole course is designed the same way. Um, it's always a module. There's an overview. There's several topics with related quizzes. And then after those several uh, quiz topics, there's a cumulative quiz over that whole module. And that's, that's the organization. So that's the course. That's what the course looks like. Uh, that's exactly what the students would see. Um, and so I'll keep going on with other stuff now. OK, so that's kind of, I came prepared. I wasn't sure that the internet would work, so I, I took screen pictures of everything in case I couldn't get into the internet. Uh, anyways, that's what that looks like. OK, so what do I know about my students? Um, we opened up with the Canvas Network, which is a part of the Canvas group, they have this thing called Canvas Network where anybody in the world can actually create a MOOC. Uh, all you have to do is just have an agreement with them to do it. And um, they encourage us to put a limit on the enrollment the first time through. They don't want to go ahead and throw 100,000 students at a course and it's just a total disaster. So we put a limit of 1,000. It filled up really fast. We said, well, let's maybe add another 100. That filled up. And I said, let's just stop and just see what happens. So I have 1,100 students who enrolled. 
Enrollment, all that means is they click a button that says enroll, and they put in their email address. It does not in any way indicate any commitment of any kind. It means I click on a button that says enroll, and think, oh, accounting, I might want to learn about that. That doesn't mean they're willing to put in 40 to 60 hours to finish the whole course. Okay, so sometimes when you see the success rates of MOOCs, oh, 100,000 people signed up for the MIT computer science course and only 1% completed, oh, that must be a junk course. No, it, it, give me a break. It's computer science. It's a tough course. It's going to take some commitment. Okay, so anyway, that's my opinion on that. Um, anyway, of the uh, 1,100 students, I had 269 actually complete a survey, which is in the first two um, hours of work. 37% uh, said they signed up because they enjoyed learning new things. 25% uh, they wanted to gain some new career skills. 34% they indicated a, an interest and willingness to invest 40 hours. So remember, we started with 1,100. Only 269 completed the survey, which is within the first couple hours. So really, we only got 269, probably. Um, and only 34% of those really indicating it, uh, an ability or willingness to actually follow the whole thing through. So you already, you're already you looking at a very small subset of original 1,100. 60% already had a four-year degree. Okay. So is that 34% of the 269? Yes. 60% okay. Okay. of those uh, had a four-year degree. 36% um, non-native English speakers. Uh, and then there's geographic areas, 55% from North America. So you can see the rest are then from other parts of the world. 57% uh, female. 40% uh, are 35 or older. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and I had a few that were between 13 and 18. How did people hear about this? Like word of mouth? Or word of uh, mouth or good question. The, um, I have my own network through which I made certain announcements about it, but then the Canvas network has it on their Canvas network catalog, and they do various public relations things to get the word out, because it's all free. Yeah. Um, the oldest is 88. Uh, very interesting individual, actually. He, um, he's the father of one of the members of our community. She took the class, she loved the class, she told her dad, who actually is a very successful entrepreneur in outdoor advertising in the Hall of Fame outdoor advertisers. And he's loving the course. Anyway, how are my students doing? So now here's interesting. We said 269 took the survey. Well, actually we had 333 take the first quiz in the modules. For so, some reason, some people didn't want to take the survey. So actually we're up a little bit than what we were thinking before. So 80% of those, I mean, sorry, 300 of the 33 actually scored more than 80% on that quiz. So they stuck to it. I don't know how many times they took the quiz, but they at least got over 80%. Now, uh, one thing I added is kind of this game theory kind of stuff where you give people badges and things, like digital badges for a certain accomplishments. So we built in some badges into the course. And if they finish all of module one, which is four quizzes, a culminating quiz, and just at least clicked on the other topics in there, uh, they get a badge. So 163 of the original 1100 actually got the first badge, module one. It's kind of funny how those can be motivating. This one gentleman wrote me, he's a retired inner city homeless shelter administrator. And uh, he said, for the life of me, I can't figure out how to get my badge. He really wanted his badge. So we <laughs> helped, him, helped him get his badge. Uh, one has actually successfully completed the whole course. Totally done. She's from Eastern Europe. She's 25 to 34, and she has a master's, and she wants to take the course to increase her career prospects. So she was really happy to get that done. Thank you very much for this course. It's very interesting, helpful, and understandable. That's from her. Helena, I think is what her name was. The deadline for the whole course is May 31st. So what do my students have to say? I'm finding the course very enjoyable, not dry or convoluted as I was somewhat expecting, <laughs> being an accounting course. Having these additional explanations to students' questions actually goes above and beyond what I was expecting for a free non-credit course. I'm no stranger to online correspondence courses for university credit, credit love so far. So, you know, after you dedicated a year of your life to something, it's nice to get some of those back. Uh, so what have I learned? It takes a ton of time, and I won't go through all those details. It takes a ton of time. Don't underestimate it. It takes a ton of time. Um, it would be difficult to complete part-time. What I did, there's no way in the world I could have completed that part-time. 
unless I had a team of technology people I could introduce today, but they're dedicated to me. No way. <laughs> you could save time if you don't create content that changes every year. If I were teaching a tax class, there's no way I'd waste the time trying to create these materials myself, because next year it'd all be new, and I wouldn't have the time to do it. My content is fairly stable, and therefore it's worth the effort. Uh, if you have technological assistance, this is like, I felt like a lone ranger. I was in an office by myself, had to learn all the technology by myself, had no one to turn to to really get any help. I felt like a lone ranger. Now if I had Squanto, you know, a team of technological Squantos. What is the name, Tonto? Tonto? <laughs> Evidently I didn't see the new Lone Ranger movie. <laughs> like a lot of people didn't. Um, Tonto. Um, I, I think maybe some of that could get, get done. Um, what you can do to buy yourself some time is you can link to other people's work. There's tons of great stuff out on YouTube. I found one YouTube video this last two weeks ago. Um, just fantastic. In five minutes, he was able to summarize some concepts uh, for inventory accounting that the average professor takes an hour to do. I gave that to my student. They just loved it. And so you can buy some time that way by referring to some great stuff that's already out there. Um, Make sure you have a good audio system. Make sure you already figure that out before you start, because otherwise you'll be a little bit disappointed as you look back and think, well, that's not really the quality I wish I had. Um, only pro you could also only provide the videos. What I could have done is I could have created the video and said, boom, that's it. I wouldn't have wasted the time creating the MP3 files, the transcripts, all those other things, and I've seen some courses that way. Um, but that could save me a, a ton of time if I didn't do the extra effort to make things more accessible to a lot of people. Um, students around the world are very kind. Um, I, really, some, some of the notes I got back from these students uh, honestly kind of brought tears to my eyes. They were just very complimentary and very grateful. And I just thought, that's so nice because I spent all this time. And it's like making this big party and nobody shows up. Well, they actually showed up and they were happy to be at the party. And that really was very validating uh, for me. I think I could possibly handle a, uh, an enrollment of about 5,000, expecting that maybe only about 20% of those would actually be participating. I think uh, in, a, in a course release, I could probably handle that, um, at least from what I've experienced so far with the course. Uh, so the bottom line is I felt inspired to do it about five years ago. I felt like I should do something. I didn't know what it was, but I kept feeling this drive that I should do something. Uh, then this opportunity came up with a sabbatical. I said, yep, I think that's what I should do, and I did it. Um, so it's done. Well, kind of. Uh, the reality is the course on go uh, has the opportunity to keep going on. Uh, there is a, a fair amount of management as the course is running, um, but it's been very, very rewarding. I really, really enjoyed having students all over the world. I get emails from Scotland, from Athens, Greece, from Indonesia. Got a couple from Pakistan, Afghanistan. They were disappointed that YouTube is blocked. So I kind of shut down the class for them. That was kind of a disappointment. But I had one from Afghanistan, one from Pakistan. They said, love to take the course, but they couldn't. Uh, so more information, that's my email. If, you want, if you'd like to go and check out my course, it's already fully enrolled, but if you send me an email, I can actually manually add you. So uh, just send me an email. I've got a YouTube channel, Kevin Kimball. Just go Kevin Kimball and you'll see my YouTube channel. I have like 609 videos up there that you can look. And then I have a, a, an Android app that I've created that helps teach some debits and credits and stuff. And there's a free version and there's a dollar version. I've sold a whopping 60, so. <laughs> anyway, it's been a fun one. So that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's what, I, what I've been doing last year. And glad I did it and I'm probably not ready to